Hi all, today we are going to discuss about the basic DC motor. So the working of the DC motor is based on the Lorentz force equation or Lorentz force law which states that when a current carrying conductor is placed in a magnetic field, it will experience as a force. That force is given by IDL is the current element. So this will be cross with B, IDL cross B or the force, the magnitude can be given by B into I into, let us assume Le is the effective length of the conductor that is falling inside the magnetic field and sine of the angle theta. So, this theta is the angle between IDL and B. This is the angle between these two vectors. So, here this Le is the effective length of conductor lying in magnetic field, lying inside the magnetic field. So, now the direction can be found either by using IDL cross B that indicates the direction of this force or it can be found by using the Fleming's left hand rule. Fleming's left hand rule. So, from IDL cross B let us try to analyze, let us assume this is my direction of IDL or this is my direction of the current and if this indicates my direction of the magnetic field, then the cross product of IDL cross B, so this will come in the Z direction, so this indicates my direction of the force or let us take for example, I am taking a north pole, I am taking a south pole, so there will be a flux lines between these two, so this is my direction of the magnetic field. Let us assume a conductor is kept in this magnetic field, so let us see what will be the force experienced by this conductor. I am taking two conductors. Let us assume one conductor or upper conductor is carrying dot and the lower conductor is carrying cross. So, in this case how the force will be produced. So, let us apply the Fleming's left hand rule. If you apply our Fleming's left hand rule, if your pointing finger is indicating the direction of the field, that is the direction of B and your middle finger indicates the direction of the current, current is coming towards us, then your thumb indicates the direction of the force. So, if you apply the force, you will get your force as like this one, your force will be like this. So, because of this force, because one is pulling like this, second one is pulling like this, so the torque will be produced or the twisting torque or rotational torque, it will start rotating in this direction. So, after some time this conductor will reach here, so it is dot here, it is cross here. So, again the direction of force will be like this and again when it reaches also the same thing will be there, the direction of force will be like this. So, when they reach here you can see one force is acting like this, another force is acting like this, the net twisting moment or the torque becomes zero the net twisting moment or the torque becomes zero and beyond this point if they move, so the direction of force because let us take for example, it has moved like this, this is my direction of the force and this is my direction of the force. So, the net force because of this couple, this current couple, this will be in the opposite direction or we can tell that if two conductors are carrying current in the opposite direction and if they are kept in the magnetic field, a torque will be produced for this point to this point where the torque will goes on changing. Here this point the torque will be because the net torque will be you have to resolve this force component in the rotational direction or in the tangent at that particular point of rotation. So, here this degrees is equal to 90 degrees. So, cos of this angle gives the value as 0, cos 90 is equal to 0 or we can tell the torque produced will be equal to 0 here and here the torque produced will be it will be in the same direction as the tangent it will be maximum. As you go on if you are resolving into this component or tangential component, the angle is going on increasing or cos of the angle is going on decreasing or the torque goes on changing. So, the problem is if you are keeping the conductor, let us assume this conductor A and this is conductor B, giving the current in the same direction, we are going to prove that the torque will not be unidirectional and so the motor will not rotate. In order to make it unidirectional, we have to go for the split ring or commutator. Let us see one by one in detail how it is coming. So, for that first I am taking a simple loop generator or the AC generator to that I am applying a DC current. So, when you are applying the DC, so the current will come out from the positive terminal like this, it will pass through the brush B1, it will go through the slip ring S1, it will go through conductor A to B and it will come from C to D and from that it will come to the slip ring S2 
and brush B2 and it will come out. So, the direction of current will be like this. So, in the conductor AB, the current will be inwards and the conductor CD, the current will be outwards. So, you can apply your Fleming's left hand rule. If you apply your Fleming's left hand rule, again your pointing finger indicates the direction of the flux, your middle finger indicates the direction of current and your thumb indicates the direction of the force. So, if you apply the force, you will get the force here as like this and the force produced by the conductor AB will be downwards. So, this is my direction of the force. So, net resultant will be the torque will be produced in the counterclockwise direction. So, we can tell that the torque will be produced in the counterclockwise direction. So, the conductor will start rotating. So, when the conductor start rotating because after some time let us assume the conductor A occupies the position number 4 and conductor D occupies the position number 2. So, the conductor A has reached position number 4 and conductor D has reached position number 2. So, now in that case what is going to happen? So, now again you apply the current direction. So, this is the positive terminal, it is connected to brush B1. So, brush B1 is connected to slip ring S1 that is connected to conductor A. So, the direction will be inwards here and the direction will be outwards or here again the current direction I can find slip ring S1. Through this it is passing through AB, again it is passing through CD and then it is passing through slip ring S2 and brush B2 and coming out. But in this case again apply the Fleming's left hand rule. If you apply the Fleming's left hand rule you will observe that the here force produced will be like this and here the force produced will be like this or we can tell the net torque produced will be in the opposite direction to that of before. So, the torque produced will be in the opposite direction. I have already shown you that point to point the torque will vary. If you are moving from point number 1 to point number 2, 3 like that at point number 1 the torque will be equal to 0 point number 2 the torque is maximum, then point number 3 the torque becomes 0, when you reach point number 4 the torque direction becomes opposite, again when you reach point number 0 the torque becomes 0. So, you can see here the torque is not unidirectional, it is varying and it is having bidirectional or what is the net effect? One half cycle the torque is produced in one direction, another half cycle in another direction. So, because of this the motor cannot continue to run because the torque is continuously fluctuating or the net torque is equal to 0 because of the moment of inertia the motor will not run. So, how the motor can run? So, whatever the torque is produced this torque should be in the unidirectional that means it should be in the same direction. How can make it in the same direction? Here you can observe if under the north pole if the current is carried inwards or the current is cross, the direction of force is downwards. If the current is coming towards, then the direction of force is upwards. If you want unidirectional torque, always the conductor that is carrying current, conduct, current under the north pole should be in the same direction irrespective of which conductor is coming there. Or I am repeating again, whichever conductor is coming under the north pole or a south pole, the direction of current in that conductor should be always in the same direction. That means, like let it be A conductor, D conductor irrespective of what conductor is coming under D north pole, it should always carry the current cross in here and whichever conductor is coming under the south pole, it should carry a current of dot, then the direction of torque will be counterclockwise direction and if it is opposite, then it will be in the clockwise direction. That means, I want to produce the unidirectional torque or I have to give the current not with respect to the conductor that means not using the slip rings, whichever conductor comes under the north pole that should get the cross, whichever conductor comes under the south pole that should get the dot. So, in order to do that work there is a device that device is called as a split ring or the commutator. So, what is that device? So, let us take the example for the two conductors. So, it will be like this, it can be divided into two parts like this. So, this is the insulation. So, this insulation is made up of the mica insulation. So, mica insulation is used and the material that is used for this is the hard drawn copper. Hard drawn copper is used and for the brushes we use the material because this material is made up of the lead because lead is very soft material because always this rotor is rotating and the br brush is collecting from that because both are rubbing to each other. So, replacing the brush is easier compared to replacing the commutator or a split ring. So, that is why the brush is made up of the lead and the commutator is made up of the hard drawn copper. Now, keeping this how the direction of the torque is becoming unidirectional using the split ring. So, that we are going to analyze now. So, for that again I am taking a split ring. Let us assume the conductor A is connected to split ring part A, conductor D is connected to split ring part B. So, now how the current passes? So, the current passes from brush B1 
So it is passing from brush B1 to commutator segment A or the split ring A to conductor AB. Then passing through CD, it is passing through CD. Then it is passing through B to B2. So now for this direction of the current, if you apply your Fleming's left hand rule, if you apply your Fleming's left hand rule, you will get the direction of force in this will be like this and the direction of force in this conductor will be like this or the direction of the torque is in the counterclockwise direction. Let us assume after some time this conductor A has reached position number 4 and conductor D has reached position number 2. Let us take it as 1 and position number 3. So now again the direction of current you can see now it will pass from brush B1. Now commutator segment B is coming here instead of A. So B then it is passing from DC then B to A and then it is passing through A and brush B2 and coming outwards. So you can see the direction of current in the conductor is reversed. Again, whichever conductor is coming under the north pole because now conductor CD is coming here. Here again it is cross or conductor is going away and in conductor AB current is coming in towards. So again apply this rule. So you will get it as here the force will be like this. Here the force will be upwards. Getting it? So again the direction of torque will be in the same direction or if you apply the torque, the torque at position number 1 will be equal to 0. At position number 2, the torque becomes maximum. Again at position number 3, the torque becomes 0. Again at position number 4, because the current direction is changed in the conductor, again torque becomes maximum, again becomes 0. So you can see here the torque is unidirectional now, but the torque is not uniform because actually I want the torque like this. So how to get the torque like this? As I have discussed in the case of generators, DC generator. So same thing I can do here. The split ring will be having multiple conductors now. Let us assume I have kept four conductors. So these four conductors are connected to a split ring like this. So this conductor is connected here, this conductor here, this conductor here, this conductor here. So let us take the conductors as A, B, C and D. Let us assume this rotor is rotating like this. So now the torque produced in each conductor if you take it. So the conductor A, the torque produced will be like this or because the current direction will be like this because whichever conductor is coming. Now the torque produced by conductor B, so conductor B will be 90 degrees behind this one. So now conductor C will be 90 degrees behind this one. So like that it come. So each conductor will be in contact for 360 degrees divided by 4. This is 360 degrees divided by 4 means 90 degrees each will be conducting. So your waveform for the torque will become like this. This is your torque waveform. So as the number of conductors are increasing, so always the whichever conductor comes under the north pole, it always carries the maximum current and the torque will be uniform. The net torque that will be produced will be nearly linearly like this or practically the amount of the torque produced will be like this. If you want to get the pure value of the DC, I have told you if this is my rotor. So your field should be like this. Your field should be having a pole shoe like this one. So field at any point will be like this. So if you are taking a conductor at any point, the torque will be like this because the direction of torque should be like this. So always the flux will be perpendicular to the direction of motion of the conductor. So when it is like this, automatically the torque produced will be maximum because the force produced will be perpendicular to this. Let us take for example, if this is my direction of P, if a conductor is kept here, let us assume the force is produced is like this. So now, if B is like this and the conductor is carrying the same current, what is the direction of force? 90 degrees to this one. Direction of force becomes like this. So let us assume if B is produced like this. So the direction of force will be 90 degrees perpendicular to this. So this is my direction of the force and the force is in the torque direction or the tangent at that particular point or we can tell the net amount of the torque that comes because torque is a tangential component at that point or rotational component. So that's why the torque becomes more uniform. That means whatever torque comes because of the conductors, even only with the two conductors, we can get the torque as like this. So if more conductors are used, then automatically your torque becomes uniform. So how to get this? By keeping a pole shoe or we can tell that by keeping a flux that is having a flat topped wave by making the flux having a flat topped wave so automatically the torque can be made 
uniform torque this is the second way of producing this so i am concluding here for the case of dc motor the two things will be done one is the splittering will be required to produce a unidirectional torque and the flux should be a flat topped wave so that the torque produced will be more uniform so now let us proceed further and see some more concepts related to the dc motor so again i am taking a north pole i am taking a south pole let us assume i am taking a dc machine there are two conductors are there so let us assume here the direction of the current is dot here the direction of current is cross randomly i am taking it so now as the current is towards us the direction of the field is like this and the current is coming towards us so your direction of the torque or the force will be like this so because of this the motor will start rotating in the clockwise direction let us take for example so now this is just equivalent to the conductor is rotating inside a magnetic field so when the conductor is rotating inside a magnetic field the flux is cut by this conductor so as for the faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction emf will be induced in this conductor so what will be the direction of the emf that can be produced by using or the found by using fleming's right hand rule so if you apply your fleming's right hand rule you will observe that if your pointing finger is indicating the direction of the field and your thumb indicates the direction of motion of the conductor then the direction of the emf that will be induced will be opposite to this one you agree with me so here in this conductor it will be cross in this conductor it will be dot you will observe that the direction of emf will be like that the current should produce should be in the opposite direction or this can be analyzed in a different way always the emf will be induced in the conductor will try to oppose it as per the linges law what is the cause for the production of this emf it is the relative motion between the conductor and the field so what is responsible for the rotation of the conductor it is due to the force it will try to oppose that force or that force is produced because of the current that is passing in this conductor so always the emf induced will oppose the cause or this emf as it is opposing it so that emf i am representing by the back emf so let us take for example i am taking a battery so i am taking a voltage v so this equivalent i can represent ra indicates the resistance of your armature then this back emf will try to oppose it so this is my back emf eb this is my plus minus v so now the current that is passed ia ia will be equal to v minus eb divided by ra so accordingly the current will pass so what does this eb indicates that eb is opposing the cause so because of this only the electrical energy that is given will be converted to mechanical energy or the product of eb multiplied by ia gives the net mechanical power developed so net mechanical power developed or the opposition in the case of the dc motor or the reason for the production of the torque in a dc motor is mainly due to the back emf which is called as the back emf for the opposing emf like the in the same way if you are taking the generator so generator whenever the current is produced so let us take the case of a generator so in the case of generator i am taking a north pole i am taking a south pole again the conductor is kept like this let us assume that generator is rotated so i am i am taking the case of a generator please don't confuse with the motor so for the case of generator if the conductor is rotated like this what will be the direction of the emf that is induced when it is rotated in the clockwise direction clockwise direction and it is moving the upwards then the direction of current or the emf will be cross here and it will be dot here so because of the current that is carried by this conductor carrying any conductor is kept in a magnetic field so what will be the direction of force experienced apply the fleming's left hand rule you will get your force is like this so let us represent this the torque that is rotating this one because it is rotated by a mechanical device from outside so this is called as mechanical torque and this force that is produced will be in the opposite direction so this torque is called as electromagnetic torque or it is also called as the magnetic drag it is opposing the cause so this electromagnetic torque is responsible for the production of energy conversion from elect mechanical energy to the electrical energy that means this electromagnetic torque is responsible for conversion of the mechanical to electrical energy and this electromagnetic torque will be proportional to emf that is generated multiplied by the current carried by the conductor that is responsible for this electromagnetic torque so your motor that external torque that is applied 
or external force that is applied by your external motor that is to compensate for this value of EGIA plus losses. That means mechanical losses in supplying this one. I hope the basic concept of the DC motor and the DC generator is clear to you. If you still have any queries, you can leave your comments in the comment section below. I will answer to your queries from there. Thank you. Thank you very much.